Transformers Rise of the Beasts is the continuation to Bumblebee and in my opinion a second step in the right direction for this franchise. And with it now having hit both digital and physical media I thought it would be a great time to take a true deep dive into this film and just about everything that I can say about it. After 2017's The Last Night, Hasbro made the right decision to retool Bumblebee into its own movie of one universe, a rebooted universe despite what some continue to believe and say about it for some reason. Bumblebee was a massive success under the circumstances of its release. It went directly against several other larger movies, some of those of which hit a billion dollars at the box office. That movie is wonderful, vibrant and a lot of fun, but it lacked the spectacle that a lot of us had gotten used to having with these movies, although it reintroduced heart, story and a real feel for the love of the franchise that these movies had also lost a while ago. Transformers Rise of the Beast takes the next steps and merges Bumblebee's heart, soul and character with inspired spectacleism from the Bayverse. Michael Bay even returned as a producer and hands-on helper to help this to be the case. And the result is a great movie that expands the series to new heights and possibilities. Starting out with the wonderful and great to this movie, we easily have its decision to go for a more familiar but simpler story and plot. Too many of the previous movies, as we all know, were boggled in this department. Here, it's simple to follow and the characters assist in moving it all forward with soul and heart. Unicron is coming and the Autobots must at first reluctantly team with the Maximals and newfound heroes to acquire the Transwarp key and prolong his and a Terracon army's inevitable arrival to Earth. It's simple and it's quite familiar to a lot of movies that have came before but it's effective in its epicness. And unlike the other films prior to this, there aren't really many side plots going on that don't in one way at least add something to the movie. Additionally to the movie, as mentioned, is character, humanity and soul. And this comes to us in the form of both our human protagonists as well as the Transformers themselves. Optimus Prime specifically here is amazing and one of my favourite iterations of him that we've ever seen across his wide spanning resume of films, TV shows, games and more. He's angry at the loss of his home and wants nothing more than to get back to Cybertron and fight for it. He admits his regrets in ever even taking the Autobots so far and out of reach of Cybertron. And with how much of his headspace is focused on the loss of his home, he's very reluctant to see the humans in a way we'd usually expect from Optimus. But the journey for him across this film leads him to a point where he ultimately does see eye to eye with Noah, played greatly by Anthony Ramos, and they sort of hit it off. Because by the film's end, he's comfortable with the humans, and along with them, with Earth, that he's found a sense of comfort and home in. The film ends with a triumphant feeling that this is just the beginning of his story and time on Earth and with the humans. Which, well, it is. Prime has a genuine and clear arc and growth in Rise of the Beasts, and it's just done so, so well. His actions and decisions are all made or understandable for one reason or another. One shining moment of this comes in a scene where Noah is about to destroy the Transwarp Key, selfishly doing it to save only Earth. He likely saw the Transformers War as not his own, a direct parallel to Optimus who equally thought the same about humanity earlier on in the movie. But here, he begins to understand and see that the humans aren't so different from him or his team after all. I am 
I'm sorry, Noah. You were looking out for your own. I can't even be angry at you for that. On my home world, we believe that the battle with darkness will continue till all are one. I lost sight of that. You fought for yours as I fought for mine, when we should have been fighting the darkness together. It sounds like we're all going to die. If we are to die, then we will die fighting all as one. Maximals, Autobots, roll out! <laughs> Think you can take me on alone? He is not alone. A second shining example of Prime having a clear motivation and reason for his actions comes in the final act, and I am of course talking about the epic moment where he shows Scourge the true power of a Prime. Over the film, he promised him he would get vengeance for Bumblebee, and here, after possibly going easy on them, he had finally had enough. I've had enough! Yeah! Time to show you the real power of a Prime! This belongs to a friend of mine! It's a really great moment in a movie full of great moments. And I just absolutely adore how Prime was represented in this film. He's hopeful even in his own doubt. Angry, but with reason, and just a total badass, as Optimus Prime should be. B. And I've seen some not so kind things said about Peter Cullen as of late, which really get to me on a personal level, and I don't think they are worth giving the time of day too much, so I'm just going to say, Peter Cullen delivered a fantastic performance as Optimus, and possibly one of the best he's ever brought to the character. And this movie, and our world, would be a lot less bright if we didn't have him as our Optimus Prime. Moving on from Optimus, we have the additional Autobots. Bumblebee, RC, Mirage, and Pablo. Some of these are unfortunately pushed to the background in the film, with the real moments to shine hopefully soon to come in the movie's sequels. But even so, they have personality and still feel like distinguishable characters of their own. Bumblebee takes a back seat, but the film uses that as a vehicle towards one of the biggest and best moments of the film. <laughs> to kick ass. Glad to have you back. After Prime avenges B's demise and he sees him return to the battlefield, we also get this very small moment between the iconic duo that I really do like. B, protect them. Now as for Mirage, he is a scene stealer to me, and at first, I really wasn't thinking I was going to be fussed on the character, especially when they announced Pete Davidson was going to voice him, but I gotta say, and I gotta hold my hands up and apologise, because he did great in this movie and injects it with so much solid comedy and charisma. I can't wait to see more of him. Another really quick thing that I genuinely appreciated both about this movie and specifically Mirage is the creatives and talents behind the camera's choice to incorporate his abilities to, well, create Mirages. Pre-established character abilities are something I've wanted to see the live action movies tackle for so, so long. And we've never really had that, especially like we had it in this film. So I'm all the more appreciative of Stephen Cable Jr., the director, who brought it 
to the big screen in such a great way with Mirage. Autobots aside, Stephen Cable Jr. also now brought the Maximals to the table. And not all of them, like the Autobots, get the chance to show us who they are and what they're made of, such as Cheetor and Rhinox. But nonetheless, I still really enjoyed their presence. As for Optimus Primal, he was awesome! And Ron Perlman, who I've had the absolute pleasure of meeting, did a great job in the sound booths for him. I still get literal chills every time I hear him shout the line that we're all hopefully thinking of, but if not, I'm about to play it. Rhinox! Cheetor! Maximize! <laughs> Just so damn cool. Next to Primal, we have, or oh, my apologies, we had Michelle Yeoh as Air Razor, who I adored and really wish we could have actually had stick around, but of course, she dies. They had great scenes and brought a lot of the heart to the Maximals, and her death scene is genuinely quite emotional. I loved the Maximals, which I, again, at this movie's first announcement and sort of details began to leak, didn't think that that was ever gonna be the case, because I didn't grow up on Beast Wars or Beast Machines, and I didn't really care for them, but lately over the last few years, I have began to think they are pretty cool. I also really appreciated how the Maximals, as a united front and as a team, stuck to the oath that they said earlier on in the movie of doing what needs to be done till all are one, no matter the cost. Your sacrifice becomes our oath. Thank you. And in addition to this, but not strictly adhering to just the Maximals, the movie's amount of small yet tender moments that really bring these characters together and elevate just how much we as audience members care for them. Now it's time to talk about one of the biggest problems with the Transformers movies to a lot of people, the human factor, which I actually really liked in this film. They didn't steal the spotlight, or the story, or even the screen time like usual. They were well incorporated and helped to save the story, not take it. Anthony Ramos's Noah is great, as I briefly mentioned earlier on. We instantly get to know him and his situation in life, which isn't all too great. But what is great is his relationship with his brother. I adored this element of the film, and even how they had nicknames for each other that lasted throughout the whole film, with of course one being Sonic, the other being Tails, and then even how Mirage got into it being called Knuckles, that was that was a really, really sweet sense of humanity and, um, and just love for the film. It was very heartwarming and delightful, and the young actor of his brother did a surprisingly really good job, especially considering it was a child's performance, and I really hope that they do come back, because again, their relationship with Noah as a character in the film was just really heartwarming, and um, genuinely one of the best parts of any really human element that any of these films have offered. What are you doing? Man, they didn't treat E.T. like this. You know this thing? Yeah, we just Work friends. <gasps> Work friends? Look, that thing I told you I have to go do, it's with him and his crew. We're trying to stop the end of the world. The world's ending? No. Maybe 60 40. You know, I'm not gonna let that happen. But that's why I have to leave. I'll go get my things. Tough kid. What? No. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, hold on. You, you, you're not coming. Why? You need someone to watch your back. It's too dangerous, Chris. Hey, robot. Me? What's up? Watch out for my brother. Okay? You got it, little man. And then we have Dominic Fishback's Elena, who I like 
but nowhere near to the level of Noah and his brother because I unfortunately think they were not very well written into the story. But nonetheless, I still thought they had a nice presence to the film and I do hope they return and can be improved upon. My critique of her character would be the writing and need of her in the story. Because unlike Noah, who feels like he has a genuine arc, very similar to Prime's as we touched on, Elena is sort of just here to tell the audience execution and move the story along. And it worked for this movie, don't get me wrong, it did work for this movie, but I hope they execute that a lot better next time going forward. Something I thought they executed very well was the villains of the film, who are of course the Terracons. Scourge, for example, is great and definitely up there alongside Lockdown, Megatron and Sentinel for one of the best live action movie villains of the series. He's cold, cunning and intimidating to the audience and the characters and he has one of the coolest lines of the entire film. <laughs> Impossible. I enjoy that look of confusion when an inferior being meets a higher power. I also really appreciated just the whole team of Terracon's connection to Unicron. Unicron of which is only teased in this film but teased very well and on a bigger level that I think none of us were actually expecting until that second trailer really teased them. For centuries, our kind oh. has stayed hidden on Earth. Yes. But darkness has found us again. Oh, Unicron. Right. Prime. Looks this better. is about the fate of all living things. That's Unicron no! is coming. I said the thing. Oh my! What? Then what? When Unicron punishes Scourge for failing to acquire all of the Transwarp Key, you realize Scourge is a slave to him, and as such, kind of a victim. The galaxy will once again be yours to feast on, my master. You fool! This is only half the key. Please, the Maximals! They must have split it! Excuses! Complete the key, or else you will wish you had died with the rest of your planet. He too had his home world devoured by the Chaos Bringer, and he was likely pulled from its wreck and converted to be nothing more than Unicron's tool and puppet. So as cunning of a character as he is, even in the film's story, you do kind of feel a tad bit of empathy for them when you realise this. Now to talk about the more technical side of Transformers Rise of the Beasts, the movie's cinematography is nice and fine. It's definitely nowhere near to the level of the Michael Bay films, or even Bumblebee in a sense, but there is still a chunk of this movie that just has some beautiful looking visuals and set pieces. The visual effects are polished very well, which is to be expected from a Transformers movie, and the action is equally very well done, which probably helps because you have Stephen Cable Jr. who did some of the Creed movies doing this. You can see everything going on, and you really do feel at times like you are a part of it. One of my favourite shots in maybe Transformers history is during the museum fight where we get to see just the scale of this Transformers war and just how big these characters are and just how violent they are and can be. Get the key! Noah, get out of here! Get off me! I hate spiders! <laughs> Go! Get out of here! <laughs> and how just crazy it must feel to be stuck in the middle of a Cybertronian smackdown. This whole fight reminded me of something just ripped straight out of Transformers Prime, which is my favourite Transformers media ever, and for that I just love this film even more. Now to talk about the sound and scoring of this film, while it is no Steve Jablonski, 
there are some really great tracks here, such as the Maximals theme that plays just seconds after, of course, Ron Perlman shouts, MAXIMIZE! <laughs> However, what I really appreciated about the composer is that they did bring back elements of Steve Jablonski's iconic score because when some of that plays in this movie, it is the definition of cinema. The Till All Are One sequence, which of course retains Steve Jablonski's iconic score, is just a brilliantly beautiful moment all around. I love it so much. <laughs> Till all are one. picked up on, my thoughts on Transformers Rise of the Beasts are overwhelmingly positive, but I don't think it's a perfect movie nonetheless. Because it isn't, it has problems, such as the writing for certain characters like we've mentioned, and the lack of moments some bots get to shine when compared to others, and even to some small degree, Optimus Primal, who I wish we could have got to see have a proper smackdown with Scourge because the film teases it and sort of basically sets it up in front of us. Elena. Wait, wait, didn't I kill you already? No, I'm the Maximal that's going to rip out your spark. We'll see about that. But that never ended up coming to fruition, which I will always feel a little bit down about, but it's fine, because this movie's still just awesome. But as a Transformers fan, who lives and breathes since I could barely remember knowing anything, I walked into this movie so excited, with such high hopes, and I walked out having had them met and just loving this film and having such a big smile on my face because seeing it with a packed audience and having them cheer at certain moments like Bumblebee's return was absolutely insane to me and I never thought I'd get that experience with a Transformers movie, especially with me living in the UK and our cinemas normally being pretty quiet. But the fact that I did... I, I, I mean, it, it's just a very special moment to me, and it's a very, very cool film that I really do enjoy. And I've longed for a movie that really feels like it's expanding the series with real and deep lore, and this movie did that to me. I was so, so pleased and happy with it, and in a place where I'm genuinely now really excited to see what's next in this story. Which I know some are a little hesitant as to whether we are going to see a sequel to this film, but I feel very confident saying we are, and we're going to hear a lot of movements about it in the coming months. Hasbro recently came out, revealed the final box office numbers, and the audience scores, and how well this movie is doing on digital sales, and probably now physical sales and they consider it a great success for the brand. I mean, I can't even imagine to, to, I can't even begin to imagine to think how many hundreds of millions of dollars and pounds and whatever they must have made off this movie's toys and merchandise because of course this is Transformers and boy do Transformers sell toys. So I'm very excited for the future. If you've seen Transformers Rise of the Beast, which if you are watching this far into the video, I have to believe you have, let me know what you think of it down below. Drop your top three best moments and your favorite character in the film because that will be great to hear. Let's continue the conversation on down there. As always, I've been Tom. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Take it easy, guys. Bye.